Once again, David Moore, Equity Advantage here with uh, Robert Zink, Zink Realty Advisors. And we've been talking about real estate, how Bob got started, uh, the wonderful helicopter. I love that story. And we're going to talk about real estate. So right now we're in a situation, the last few days, stock market's been a little bit crazy. And, and I don't know if you in the audience, we, we have a couple of different businesses in here. One that handles tax deferred exchanges, one that does retirement accounts. Anytime we have whoop de doos in the stock market, the uh, retirement side of our business sort of warms up. So... You know, with that said, tell, tell me about real estate. Why, why real estate? Why real estate today in your mind? And, and you did mention, you know, your tenants buying a property, but you've got other, lots of other benefits too. Well, I think real estate gives us more benefits than the stock market typically. I mean, you have appreciation, debt reduction, the ability to change the use, improve the property. And, and over time, our tenants are, as we mentioned earlier, paying off the loan and uh, making the mortgage payment and making those payments for us. But real estate is just a more flexible vehicle than the stock market and typically isn't as volatile as the stock market. I mean, certain, anything can happen, but you know, you're still paying off the loan and uh, yeah. all of that. So, it's, well, so there's uh, sort of a bundle of benefits you talked about. I was, uh, I was always taught never to bank on appreciation. But as we said, typically you're going to have that happen anyway if you hang on to things long enough. Now, so if we look at that and what what would provide a problem, I guess, in real estate is leverage. And, and I joke when I was a kid, probably when you were a kid too, if we could buy something, nothing down, we're going to. And right. today we're probably not going to do that because we don't need the, the brain damage or, or, or our wife's getting on us about losing something. And, and so the debt can be your best friend, your worst enemy. Right. And I think as we get older, we're just more conservative. We don't need to take those risks. So we have less debt, sometimes no debt. Sometimes people want their property free and clear, and that's fine. Oftentimes you see 40, 50 percent debt or across a portfolio, you might have no debt on one end and some debt on the other end, which was, you know, one of my clients attitudes towards it. I'll have a mix of debt and it kind of all averages out to 40, 50 percent debt. Yeah. So, so Bob, in today's world, where do you think we're headed? Because, I mean, your background is not that much different than mine. I mean, you were a, you were a, a professional in the real estate community where I was more the investor consumer on, on that. So you talk about some of your limited partnership type stuff. But if you look at that and you look at one of the things I loved about real estate was your ability, anybody could get into real estate, investment real estate. And a lot of times somebody's first investment's their home. Uh, maybe they get married, they have kids, they, the home's too small, they move out and that home now becomes an investment. And the next thing you know, they're you know calling me up about a 1031 exchange and growing that thing. Mm -hmm. But what in today's political world, we've got things that are impacting you know, that little person's ability to get started or to maybe grow things. What, what do you see happening out there with, with uh, you know, let's say, let's just break it down more to uh, residential investment property versus other things, because typically we're talking bigger investors, deeper pockets with industrial and those things. But Yes, David, I think most people in real estate start in rental houses, duplexes, fourplexes, or a small plex of some kind. And historically, we could get into one of those for small amounts of money. Mm -hmm. And today, uh, with appreciation, it takes a lot of money to even buy a rental house. A rental house in Portland could be, uh, you know, two to $400,000, which means a pretty significant down payment. And then once you own it, you've got all these um, hassles of tenants and toilets and government intervention and all. So we're seeing people um, gravitating to other vehicles such as we mentioned earlier the DST market where you own a piece of something and there's a large uh, provider taking care of that property for you so they look after the the property the tenants the mortgage the maintenance all of those things and uh, so it's not just the cost but also a lot of us as we get older would like to spend time traveling with our spouse seeing our grandkids and enjoying the fruits of the labor of all this hard work of 
having those rentals over time. Definitely, definitely. Well, and, and you know, any investment professional is going to talk about diversification, whether we're talking Wall Street real estate or Wall Street and real estate. But, but the thing is, if you look at the investment world, the real estate doesn't really pick up you know, that much of somebody's, especially we're talking about retirement portfolios. But, uh, you know, to diversify, to, uh, you know, I, I, uh, just the last few days with the, the whoop de doos in the market, stock market, you know, I'm looking at it and every morning I get up, my wife tells me not to, but I, I don't listen to her, of course. So I have to look at my phone and see what the stock quotes are and where, where we are with everything. And, and it sort of, you know, puts my mood in positive or negative uh, for that day, right. unfortunately. So I got to got to look at it. But I always like the real estate uh, and, and just from the perspective that I felt like, hey, is this something tangible? It's there. And when I'm buying it, I'm not going to buy it unless I know what I'm going to do with it. I, you know, what am I going to make? How am I going to make it? When am I going to make it? If I can't answer the questions, don't buy it. But those things are starting to get tied down by government regulation and costs. And, and I'm seeing just this movement where the homeowner, the, the you know, investment property owners is looked at as the bad guy and, and everything's leading to more costs. So I think you know, you're, you're working in, in another very interesting field, the DST market, and we'll hit that in the next segment. But I, I think it's, it's really interesting to see where that world's going and giving people a place to go and, and ultimately it adds liquidity to a marketplace and I think that's good for everybody. Right. So anyway, thank you. And once again, David Moore and, and Robert Zink, Zink Realty Advisors. And uh, thank you for being here with us today.